Okay, so let's look at the Applied Maths Higher Level Sample Paper 2022-2023. A learner driver is practicing driving around a roundabout. The motion of the car may be modeled as horizontal circular motion center O with radius R and constant angular speed omega as in the diagram above. Write an expression for S the displacement of the car relative to O at any time T in terms of R omega and T. Your expression should use the unit vectors I and J. Note that t is equal to zero when s is along the i-axis. So we know that we have omega is just going to be radians per, per second. So we know then that our angle must be omega times t. Omega is going to be radians or angle per second. We're multiplying by time, which is seconds. So we can just divide here and we end up with our angle. So theta is equal to omega times t. Now, if we take our displacement vector, we can see that that's going to look something like this when we resolve it. So this is our theta here. This is our radius here. So our displacement is going to be or cos theta in the i direction or sine theta in the j direction. So our displacement vector then is going to be or cos theta i plus or sine theta in the j direction. So we know then that our theta is omega times t, so we can just replace that, or cos omega t in the i direction, plus or sine omega times t in the j direction. And that's it really. Um, let's move on. Derive an expression for v, the velocity of the car at any time t. So the velocity of the car is just going to be what we get when we find a derivative of this thing here. So we're going to do the s dt, if you like. So that's going to be our velocity. So it's going to be, if we derive cos, we get minus sine. So it's going to be minus or, now we have to use the chain rule here as well because we have constant times t. So we end up with a, an, an extra omega here on the outside. And we have sine omega t here, and that's in the i direction. If we derive sine, we get cos, so it's going to be or, and again, we end up with the extra omega here using the chain rule. So it's going to be cos omega t in the j direction. And that's it for velocity. So let's keep going then. Use the dot product calculation to show that the car's velocity and displacement are always perpendicular to each other. Okay, so we've got to take the velocity and the displacement vectors, these two vectors here, this one and this one here, and do dot product. So we have s dot v, that's going to be, let's see, or cos omega t in the i direction plus or sine omega t in the j direction. And we've got to do the dot product with minus or omega sine omega t in the i direction plus or omega cos omega t in the j direction. Okay, so let's do this dot product. Now to do the dot product, we just multiply that by that and that by that. Uh, so what do we get? Let's see, we have or times minus or, so that's minus or squared. We have the omega as well. We've got cos omega t sine omega t. And then when we do these two, we get plus, again, r squared omega, sine omega t, cos omega t. Okay, so when you look at these, you can see that they just give you zero when you add them. This is minus r squared omega, cos omega t, sine omega t, and this is just the plus version of it. So we just get zero. So that's really it. This just means then that s displacement vector is perpendicular to our velocity vector. Show that the acceleration of the car is always directed towards O. Okay, so what we need to do is do the next derivative. We need to derive the velocity vector, so we're going to derive this one here to get our acceleration vector. So let's do that. So the acceleration is just going to be d2s over dt squared, which is going to be minus or omega squared cos omega t 
in the i direction minus or omega squared sine omega t in the j direction. So that's what we get when we do the second derivative, when we do the derivative of the velocity vector. Now if we have a look at that, what I can do here is just take out minus omega squared and I'm left with or cos omega t i plus or sine omega t j. If you look at this, you can see that we just end up with minus omega squared and this thing here is just our displacement vector or cos omega t or sine omega t. That's what we got up here. So I can just replace that with s. So this is our acceleration vector. So you can see here that, well, what I can say here is since uh, s, the s vector, is directed away from O. Our acceleration vector is directed is directed towards towards O. This is due to the negative sign. So let's have a look at the next question. Derive an expression for the maximum velocity the car could have as it travels around the roundabout without slipping. Your expression should be written in terms of orgy and mu, the coefficient of friction between the car and the road. Okay, so if we draw a little sketch here, we have our car and it's going to be mg down in that direction and normal reaction up there and in this direction here we're going to have friction and that's mu or our acceleration by the way is in this direction towards the center of the roundabout now we know that r is going to be equal to mg this is because the car is not moving up or down so r must be the reaction must be equal to mg. Now we also know that our friction is going to be equal to mu times or, so that then would just mean that our friction force, the friction force towards the center is going to be equal to mu mg by just replacing mg in there for or. Okay, so we also know that we have centripetal force towards the center, so if f is equal to mu mg that force then must be equal to mv squared over or our centripetal force. Now if we just mess around with this here, multiply across by or, divide by m, get the square root, we should end up with the square root of mu mg or over m square rooted and that gives us our v uh, there. Now we can just Get rid of that m there, and we finally end up with mu, the square root of mu g r is equal to v. That's our velocity uh, equation. Okay, so let's see. Next question. We have used dimensional analysis to show that the units for the expression you derived in part 5 are equivalent to the units for velocity. Okay, so we derived this equation here. Let's just write that down again. We have v is equal to the square root of mu g r. Velocity is in meters per second. On this side, we can ignore the square root. We're not interested in that. We can also ignore this. It has no units. Our g has units meters per second squared, and our r has units meters. So really what we end up with is meters squared over second squared, which is just meters per second. So we do end up with the same units on the right and left hand side. And that's it for that question. Now the next question I've written out already, let's see, do you think that the assumptions made in developing this model were appropriate? Explain your answer. So I've just said here that if this were a modeling project it would make a good first iteration I think. However in subsequent iterations you would need to consider other variables like air resistance, road, surface quality, maybe changes in the driver's speed, if the roundabout is on a hill and so on. There are probably loads of other different variables that you could throw in there, but they're just a few. And that's really it for this particular question.